Back in July of 2021, I backed the Kickstarter for the third edition of Hyperborea, the role-playing game of swords, sorcery, and weird science fantasy. Originally slated for a December 2021 release, there has been a delay due to a paper shortage. However, just this week, my books finally came in. Was it worth the wait? I'll let you know, coming right up on RPG Retro Reviews. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. This week I'm taking a look at the Hardcover Player's Handbook, Referee's Manual, and Atlas for the Hyperborea role-playing game. I know I was supposed to be doing a review of the City of Greyhawk box set, but since these books arrived they've really been in my hands near constantly and I've ran two game sessions with them, so I wanted to give my overall impressions of the actual books and then do a proper D20 review of the game system itself since I didn't do that when I reviewed the PDFs back in January. If you want to know what this game is about, please check out my original Hyperborea review here and then my video in January detailing the changes to the rules for the third edition of the game here. City of Greyhawk review will definitely be out next week. For those unfamiliar, Hyperborea is a high quality OSR fantasy RPG heavily influenced by first edition advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Not only does the author take his cues from the works of Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson, he is also heavily influenced by the works of John Eric Holmes, who did the first revision of the game affectionately referred to by enthusiasts as the Blue Box Basic Set. This can be seen in the assigning of a dexterity stat for all the monsters and several of the included monsters as well, such as the Weir Shark and the five-tier alignment system. However, Hyperborea is definitely its own unique game as well in two major areas. First, while the overall structure of early Dungeons & Dragons is ever present, the classes, the spells, and the combat system have been tweaked, revised, and streamlined. And two, much of the changes to the game system align the game's mechanics with its pulp fantasy setting of Hyperborea. While the common school of thought is that the rules should be, should be setting agnostic, Hyperborea eschews that line of thinking with a highly imaginative setting that mingles its pulp fantasy flavor with system dynamics resulting in a very tasty recipe that is tailor-made for enthusiasts of weird science fantasy fiction. If you are a fan of the pulp era, especially the works of Conan author Robert E. Howard, the soul-crushing horror of H.P. Lovecraft, and the Hyperborean cycle from Clark Ashton Smith, then this game is for you. The game's author, Jeffrey Talanian, provides a rich and detailed campaign setting that is fleshed out enough to get the imaginative juices flowing, but not with so much detail as to make customizing the setting difficult. Long-time viewers of the channel already know my feelings on this game. I currently have two videos reviewing the system. The first is for the second edition of the game, and the second is a review of the third edition PDFs I did back in January when they were released. At that time, I didn't do a D20 review of the third edition as I didn't have the physical books in hand. Now I do, so let's just get right into it. First of all, the overall feel and weight of these books is spot on. The choices made for paper weight, binding, the page and cover finishes, the ribbon book markers, and the organization all congeal to make an enjoyable reading experience. In my review of the PDFs, I mentioned that a lot of reference work here has been exceptionally streamlined, in some ways taking cues from old school essentials and adding additional bullet points, but also the monster listings have been reorganized and streamlined, and in my opinion, it greatly improves the functionality of the rules as a reference work during play. With game rules such as these that encompass such a large page count, it must fulfill two roles. 
The first is to explain the rules of the game to the reader, and the second is to serve as a reference work, especially during play, ideally making the task of resolving rules questions quick, easy, and decisive. Here's the listing for the Albert in the 2E version versus the 3rd edition. And as you can see, the traditional text-dense version has been exchanged for more condensed line listing style, like you would find in modules. At first, I was not particularly happy with this change, but after actually using it in play and cut and pasting stats from the PDF to my own notes, I found this preferable and a lot more functional. Spell resistance has been greatly streamlined as well. Previously, you would look at the listing for the monster and that would be the roll needed or less on a d20 to resist a spell from a 12th level caster for each level less than 12 of the sorcerer casting the spell, the chances of success decreased by one. Now that's no longer the case. The name of the ability has been changed to sorcery resistance and the number listed is just the number needed to resist the magic straight up. No further calculations are needed. Now, I ordered the regular hardback versions rather than the leatherettes. I prefer the artwork covers and they do look great. The colors are rich and outstanding and I love the matte finish, not glossy, which feels great in your hand. These have cloth binding and sewn in ribbon bookmark, which is also super, super handy. The pages themselves are high quality, no bleed through of the ink, and rather than being stark white, they have this cream color, which means they are easy on the eyes. Also, the pages are not glossy. As I've gotten older, I've found glossy pages kind of annoying as they create a glare when holding them at the wrong angle. And of course, I have to have a decent light source nearby in order to read anyway. Just the nature of the eyes as you get older, and these pages are easy on the eyes. Now, let's take a look at the Atlas. The new format for the Hyperborea map is a major improvement and standout. The PDF doesn't do it justice. I've had the pleasure of using this in play and its utility is undeniable. The one thing I disliked about the poster map was that it was huge and just impractical to use at the table. Furthermore, if you were reading an entry in the Gazetteer portion of the rules, it might be a bit of a challenge to pinpoint its location on the map. This atlas format has an index in the back, so all you need to do is find its entry and go to that page. So much easier. Obviously, this looks great as well. The decision to split the rules into two volumes is a good one. The 2E, the second edition 600 page behemoth was a bit of a beast at the gaming table and also it wouldn't take long to feel a bit heavy in your lap when reading it when not playing. The organization of the indexes in the player's handbook and the referee's manual are comprehensive and functional. Using this in play is a joy and now very easy to find the specific rule or Hyperborean world entry on the fly. This is all major improvements. So with all that said, let's go ahead and take a look at the third edition of Hyperborea, the game of sword, sorcery, and weird science fantasy on my D20 scale of style, presentation, and value. In my previous review of this game, I was enthralled with the quality of the artwork and this new edition somehow managed to step up its game with even more of the weird, strange, and evocative imagery that permeates the setting of Hyperborea. I previously rated this a natural 20 and that still stands. Critical hit once again, if not more so. For presentation, Talanian's organizational skills are on full display. As I previously said, Jeffrey Talanian has his own style of prose that is enjoyable to read and still descriptive and easy to understand. Bullet pointed sections of the rules were already a highlight, very similar to old school essentials, but retaining the descriptive text sections as well. These rules manage to walk the knife's edge between enjoyable prose and rules functionality brilliantly. Quite a few rules have been streamlined or additional text added for clarity, so more of a good thing to be sure. My only real problem with the previous edition here was that there was a 600 page rulebook without an index, which was a high crime in my opinion to be sure. Not only has Talanian added an index, he's added several and the indexes he's added are phenomenal. Every major topic is covered and then some. 
Combined with the index from the Atlas and the Player's Handbook, the utility of these books as a reference work is greatly enhanced. Major improvements, and that rates a natural 20 as well for me. Thanks, Jeff. Finally, let's talk value. These books are absolutely gorgeous. The setting of Hyperborea is brilliant, and the old school rules of D&D combined with Jeffrey Talanian's tweaks makes for a game that plays fast, hits the right notes on death and danger, and pulp feel. This is a game setting designed for the long form campaign, and as such, what's in these two volumes along with the Atlas, offers years of gameplay. There is a bundle sale going on right now over at Northwind Adventures, where you can get the Player's Handbook, the Referee's Manual, and the Atlas, all for $100. The Leatherette set is $135. Note this is a back order entry, as uh, all the Kickstarter have not been fulfilled yet, and of course, orders now will be fulfilled after the Kickstarter. That said, the entry level of the game is still a bit pricey, so as before, I will rate this a 19, and that brings the overall rating for the Hyperborea RPG to a 19. <laughs> Amazing, or as I like to say, astonishing. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you found this review useful and enjoyable. I'd like to take the time to thank all my patrons who make this channel what it is and these videos possible. Thank you so much. Next week, I'll definitely be getting to the City of Greyhawk box set. After that, the new Hero Quest supplement, the Frozen Horror Quest Pack, has been released, and I will definitely be taking a look at that. Please give this video a like, comment, and share. Please check out my Teespring store for great gaming swag, t-shirts, carry bags, coffee cups, and more. Join the channel's Facebook page, RPG Retro Reviews. Consider supporting the channel by becoming a patron yourself, or alternatively, you can just send a tip through the PayPal tip jar. A link is in the description. And as always, my friend, may your D20 roll true and game on.